it's time for the visit with the person of high strangeness. Um, this is part two of a two-part story, um, a crime and corruption, a personal story. And um, this was an exclusive interview, and uh, we had sort of left you with a cliffhanger. But just in case you didn't see the story last week, I'd like to recap very briefly for you. Um, the, my guest, um, Evelyn Cessna, I'm, I'm sure I said that wrong again. No, you said, um, I said that right. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> she um, came forward and shared a story with us that um, could some people consider a scandal in Washington State in the um, in the early 70s. And this is the first time she came to tell her story. And we sort of took you from the good days and uh, her early times to uh, to show you that sometimes when you do something good, um, there are people that object to that and. Um, and on a personal on a personal thought, yeah, I'm thinking about Microsoft here. Um, it, on a per, on a personal here, not it makes any difference to anyone, including their judge. I think uh, Mr. Allen and Mr. Gates are attempting to do some good things, and that is not to the liking of some people. Therefore, they're now going to break up the company, and uh, send all the pieces in different directions. And so, anyway, having having said that. Um, Today is the second part of the show where we're going to go more into details about um, what happened in the later years and uh, some of the legalities and uh, the wonderful attitude that this lady was able to maintain to all of that. And so I welcome you again, Miss Evelyn Cessna. Thank you. Wonderful. I'm, I'm so bad with names. and You're doing beautifully. Thank you. <laughs> And uh, let's see, we had sort of left a cliffhanger, which was um, we wanted to go to the Tucker City Insurance Company and we had ran out of time. That's right. So would you like to go there first? Or yes, should we go let me tell you about mm -hmm. Preston uh, Tucker. They did a uh, show, a movie mm -hmm. on him. Um, Lloyd Bridges, I think, mm -hmm. was in it and so on. Uh, in 1988, where um, this was a true story of a man in 1948 who took on Ford um, car, mm -hmm. uh, Chrysler, and General Motors, I believe it was, mm -hmm. the big three, and he um, made 670 automobiles, and of those, before he ran out of money, mm -hmm. and uh, of those, 635 are still going strong. Strong, yeah. Um, it was not uh, the the use of fossil fuels. I think was one mm -hmm. of the things that uh, that he was against and in, in making these. But anyway, uh, many people have um, told my sons and others that that he, they felt that uh, Jack Cisna was the Tucker of the insurance industry. He was given an award in uh, Camberley out of uh, London for his work in the insurance industry. He was rewarded by uh, Governor G uh, Conley down in Texas and so on for his work. And um, yet um, here he is in the real bad trouble. Uh, mm -hmm. the, um, uh, we had started at the, foot, at the end of the last uh, session where mm -hmm. um, they have um, gone uh, the um, receiver under the Securities Exchange Commission had um, not paid for the mortgage on the Pacific Federal um, uh, to the Pacific Federal Bank in Tacoma and had gone on the uh, second signer, which was Jack Cisna, and had demanded uh, the 170000 and had taken all of our property in order to uh, fulfill that. Now, uh, by any law, we would own the building after right, paying yeah. off the mortgage. He was also uh, the receiver that the court appointed was on the board of directors of that mm -hmm. bank. Um, so, but they had to do something to keep Cisna without funds and down because they wanted the land. And uh, so this is the way they worked it. So they sold the shopping center mm -hmm. to... Um, the, and it was located in Federal Way, yes, in Washington, right. that is in the Seattle area. Right, mm -hmm. correct. Uh, they sold it to a California firm, but they had to have a release from us of that building before they could sell it. Well, it was just before Christmas, and um, uh, we had been, um, my husband had a class action with the 5,000 people that owned 
uh, portions of this land. Right. Uh, and uh, they had been, after we had run out of money to try to, uh, uh, to keep in court, they had band together both the uh, people that owned the Southwest 8 and the shopping center and mm -hmm. Federal O Line because the Federal O Line policy owners, you see, owned the building, I mean the uh, company. And so all three of them band together and um, had a f what they called a fair share. They sent mm -hmm. in each month what they could. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it would be five dollars a month. Sometimes it'd be a hundred dollars a month. It just depended on who it was and how much they could afford. Uh, for the litigation, uh, it was divided three ways. Uh, a third of it was for our expenses to stay in there and fight for them. A uh, third was for the uh, the um, legal uh, uh, part that goes through the courts, and a third was to tell them what was happening. Mm -hmm. We had 5,000 letters twice a month that we had to send out and then he also went to the eight home offices around mm -hmm. the state and um, everybody that was uh, that wanted to hear and had questions and so on would come to these meetings. Mm -hmm. And um, now and then you then I understand you did a really good job with that and then they came took your presses. <laughs> yeah, yes. Well, we, uh, we had um, we were trying to get the, the land back, mm -hmm. and we did succeed in getting the Southwest 8. The, the, uh, we got one of the buildings we didn't get back, the Hippodrome building, mm -hmm. the round one, we didn't get back, but the other six we got back. And so, oh, we were euphoric. Well, uh, then they found, we found that the receiver hadn't paid taxes mm -hmm. all the year that it had been under litigation, and so they owed uh, over 100000 in taxes mm -hmm. to the state. Uh, so the owners band together and they got that money together and they paid the taxes and I think there was about 70 some uh, thousand that was left over after they had paid the taxes to um, fix the buildings up again. They hadn't mm -hmm. done anything to them all these years and they'd been gutted but nevertheless they were um, worth three and a half million just the way they were. Mm -hmm. So we did get that back. Well so Jack and I went to California and back to Philadelphia because that was where uh, let's see, when you're trying to get money for the buildings, you need to use the um, the highest and best use for the building was what it was in designed for in the beginning. In the first place, so yeah. it was for it was for a um, um, a um, amusement park. Uh, when we had put it in, we had um, gone and seen Disney, uh, Walt Disney, awfully nice fella, and he had sold us uh, a, a train that they mm -hmm. had for the shopping uh, yeah. for um, uh, Disneyland down in California. It was too small for Disneyland. Mm -hmm. They wanted a bigger one, so they sold that to us, and, and it had uh, it went around the periphery of the shopping center and so on, and a lot of things that we had had. So um, anyway. Um, we went down to California and then over to Philadelphia and we, we got a man who was going to uh, take over the Mad Mouse, put in another Mad Mouse and take over that building and he was going to pay 80000 a month. We came home all euphoric because we thought now the owners at last could get some could of the get money back. Out of it, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, found disaster had struck. Before we left to go down there, we when we got the buildings back, we needed somebody to manage the buildings. Mm -hmm. And a man came to us with a five-page resume, beautiful resume, yeah. gorgeous. He'd had master's degree from three universities. He was supposed to be the uh, youngest uh, insurance commissioner in the United States from the state of Alaska. Well, he had actually worked in the uh, insurance commissioner's office, but he uh, <laughs> certainly wasn't an insurance commissioner. Uh, it was a fault resume mm -hmm. but we were so busy that we didn't take time to check it out and so um, he was a plant by the bad guys and um, because you see Jack had a class action well no it wasn't class, uh, it was a uh, antitrust mm -hmm. suit with us in the Supreme Court of the United States they accepted it and uh, ran for, ran through the um, Renquist. Mm -hmm. The uh, Supreme Court uh, judge had called four times trying to set up a time when he could come back and present the case in Washington, D.C., but there was always so many cases here that he couldn't go back there. Uh, so anyway, uh, we had um, uh, this man, Whitbeck, uh, who was u a union organizer, and he mm -hmm. knew how to fight uh, crooked. And um, so after we had gone, 
Now, I need to back up. When the fair share was uh, given by each person as they could, and that were owners of that land, uh, we never touched the money ourselves at all. We had um, uh, people that were owners that, um, that without pay came mm -hmm. and donated their time. They uh, put the money in the bank. They uh, very carefully wrote receipts for everybody that had sent anything in and this sort of thing. And they helped us get out the letters and that sort of thing. Jack wrote them, but they uh, got them out. Them, yeah. And we had an offset press that, um, that helped us with that. And um, anyway, uh, so um, when we came back, we found that um, Whitbeck had uh, uh, had gotten to the office because he had access to it, had taken all of the um, the uh, lists that he could find of the owners mm -hmm. and had taken the big owners, of course, that had put the most money in, and uh, called them and told them that, did you know that mm -hmm. Cisna was old now and he wasn't going to really be able to help you much? And uh, if uh, he doesn't win this uh, antitrust suit uh, against these three insurance companies that were doing the damage, mm -hmm. that you'll lose your house, that you'll have to pay the court costs. Yeah. Now, the insurance company that did the damage would have had to pay a triple damages mm -hmm. and so it was a big amount and they didn't they do they certainly weren't going to lose and they so mm -hmm. that they was a plant by them to, for this Whitbeck but so he talks these two uh, volunteers that are helping in the office into coming out and seizing the land taking the money out mm -hmm. because of course they had access to it they were the ones who put it in and going out and seizing the buildings and um, so then they uh, slapped a lawsuit immediately against um, so it was owners against Owners, uh, yeah. uh, Jr. Mm -hmm. And that's what really um, killed him in a way because yeah. uh, he could fight the bad guys. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, you know, he'd get up in the middle of the night, every night, every weekend he worked. Uh, briefs for all these, uh, he would lose some cases just because physically it was impossible to get the papers to court. Mm -hmm. um, and so now uh, we are... Uh, besieged so it's owners against owners mm -hmm. now there was only one i think of our board that went over to the other side the rest of the board were uh, were on our side but the poor most of those poor little people didn't know who to believe, who to believe and so they just yeah. sat there and didn't do anything you know they they really yeah. couldn't you, you know it's like uh, if if a person um i'm trying to visualize this a little bit here um, if a person has ever been in court for any length of time, um, you hear the prosecutors and I mean the accusers and you, you sit there and the story they formulate sounds very logical. And you say, oh, that's how it was. Mm -hmm. And then you hear the opposite, I mean the defense or whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it. And oh my goodness, now it really makes sense. And then, and then as just as you formulate your mind, things are changed again on whoever has the better story and formulates yeah. it the best way. Yeah. That sounds logical no matter what you do, whatever evidence you have. Um, if it doesn't uh, benefit your accuser, it's not, it's not admissible. And then, and then right. your adrenaline, adrenaline, you run on adrenaline for a long time. Yeah. And then it's kind of like pain. After so long, it just wears you out, and it, it does, just yeah. wears you out. So being, uh, l like you said, some of the some and of the friends don't the know court. what to do. Yeah, and, and these former friends of ours, yeah. you know, almost like family. Yeah, and uh, they would come to me with tears in their eyes yeah. and say all the things that Jack had been That's doing right. for them, and now they're uh, they don't know look what to at do. a stone faced, yeah. you know, and. Um, but you have to just realize that the people didn't know they were poor little people that just That's didn't right. know what was going on and. Mm -hmm and had been t a bill, uh, told a bill of goods um, against us. So anyway, um, we, um, Whitbeck um, wanted to, of course, again, get rid of Cisna. That was what he was there to do, was mm -hmm. to get rid of Cisna and get every bit of money away from him so that he couldn't fight it anymore, so they could have the land and everything. So. Um, he makes a list. It was several pages long of legal, yeah, uh, I remember that. legal yeah. length, and um, he asked for everything in the office. Well, there was seven uh, rooms in the office, um, and we had taken the um, some of those. 
walls from the Castle of A out in, uh, we'd gotten those away in Florida, mm -hmm. uh, the Florida building, and we had taken them uh, to the office to keep them safe because they were just mm -hmm. priceless. And um, so he wanted those. He wanted all the typewriters. He wanted about 80% of all Jack's files. Well, some of those files were uh, mm -hmm. clients that he had that had nothing to do with Federal Line, Federal Shopping Way or yeah. anything. Uh, so he insisted on those. And um, it just, you know, turned everything mm -hmm. over to him, all the furniture and um, Jack's law books. Well, some of those law books he had before I was, we were even married. No, you, you, you know, told me just how many thousands they had taken, and thousands. Yeah. But anyway. So he um, uh, put this in court, and, and Judge Howard was the first uh, one that heard it. Now, Judge Howard was trying to catch a plane to go to mm -hmm. Spokane for something. I don't know what, but he said, I haven't uh, read Sistna's side. I've only read the other side. And he said, um, um, Whitbeck here, of course, he was uh, represented mm -hmm. by a lawyer, That's but right, um, yeah. uh, wants um, these material in order to present his case for court. So turn them over to him, and then uh, the, the uh, trial will determine who owns what. And... Um, <laughs> that would have put us out where we couldn't have done anything, anything you know, yeah. at all. Uh, so, uh, and in the first place, in the second place, uh, they were the clients' things, and you cannot. Um, uh, a lawyer is a um, uh, a um, an officer of the court, an officer of the court, and he can't turn over his clients' stuff to exactly. the bad guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Jack said, "Your Honor, look mm -hmm. at the list. See what he's asking for. Mm -hmm. He's asking for furniture and and uh, you know seven mm -hmm. typewriters. How is that going to? And the walls even in, in the in there is that going to help him present a case? a case? I haven't got time to listen to you. Mm -hmm. I've got to get to the airplane. So just turn him over, and off he goes." Mm -hmm. We went to six other judges, trying to get them to listen and see the the the, the, the uh, list and see that it was an impossible situation. Uh, one of the lawyers we went to in the Superior Court here in Seattle was um, a woman. Uh, begins with P. I can't remember her name, but anyway, she looked at the thing. She was the first one that read it. She said they haven't got a leg to stand on, so they had her recoosed. All right, so it finally went to, um, well, I'm not going to say, but anyway, um, uh, so he, and it was at that time when Jack was supposed to be back at Washington, D.C. with this antitrust case. But anyway, the judge said, um, are you going to turn them over or do I have to put you in jail? Well, Jack gave a wonderful talk. I wish I had a copy of it about mm -hmm. what the, um, the uh, duties of a lawyer in a court are that you can't do what you want yeah. to do. You have to do what the law says to do. So the judge says, okay. So he got six big burly policemen with side arms and the whole thing who came up and uh, uh, put uh, Jack's hands behind his back and, yeah. and um, put the handcuffs on, led him out of the court. So I stood up and boy, I sure gave the judge a piece of my mind and he just looked stonily at me and didn't say a thing. So I went up to the um, lawyer's table and I got all the um, papers of Jack and got his raincoat and, or his coat and his hat and followed him out. And uh, they take him right past all these, you know, the big rotunda there where all those elevators are on both sides. and. Um, some of the lawyers came out and they said, isn't that Jack Cisna? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, he goes up to the 10th floor and they put him in a cell where um, there's supposed to be 17 people, mm -hmm. but um, there were 27 in there and so some of them had to sleep on the floor because yeah. it was overcrowded. Overcrowded, even at, at <laughs> yeah, dead right. early in the game. Yeah. And they saw this man coming with six big burly policemen yeah. and they thought he must be a, uh, a godfather of the mafia or something. <laughs> And then when they found he was a lawyer, everybody lined up to tell him yeah. uh, they had sorry, troubles. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they did get um, uh, him a, a bunk on the, uh, the uh, uh, lower bunk, uh, so he had a place, but it was all dark in mm -hmm. there, and he didn't have his papers. He couldn't prepare. And there was uh, not only this case back in Washington, D.C., but um, there was a, a hearing before um, Windsor four, days, four or five days uh, in advance of that, and... Um, so he was there until 2 o'clock in the morning. I got a call saying to come down to the uh, jail and uh, get Jack. And um, that was the day of the hearing before Windsor. 
Now, when we went before Windsor, Jack didn't have these papers. He yeah. didn't have time to get any witnesses or anything ready. And uh, Windsor was uh, fine during the day, even nice, you know, was polite to everybody and everything. And then somehow somebody got to him that night mm -hmm. because the next morning he had a stone face and he wouldn't talk to Jack. He wouldn't let Jack open his mouth. He wouldn't let him have yeah. witnesses or anything. And he um, had something that I have never heard before. He... Um, he appointed a man to come to Jack's office and do an inventory on all of the thousands of files that he had, every one of them. And he only gave us about two days' notice. So for the next two days, day and night, I didn't go to bed at all I had to copy what we had to have, the most important things, because then Whitbeck, the bad guy, gets all of these these boxes and boxes of files, mm -hmm. and he was supposed to have them for a month. Well, to this point, and this has been how many days? This was now, we're talking about 82. 82, yeah. And uh, this is, this uh, is 2000. Years. So, yeah, yeah, right. so this is 12 so years the, into your dilemma. So here, now, right? to the present mm -hmm. date, he hasn't given any yeah. of them back. Um, I had great big scrapbooks of mm -hmm. all of our pictures of the... Uh, house and the islands and a lot of stuff that had been admitted in court and he's got all of them. But anyway, uh, while they were doing it, they took oh, a bunch of twine, a heavy twine up and um, as fast as they could they started taking his law books including the uh, the bookcases. Mm -hmm. And so I, uh, they had a policeman with him and I said this is not a, a, according to the um, judge's orders that you've mm -hmm. got right here in front of you. And I said, can't you stop them? And they said, he said, no, I can't. So I got a hold of the prosecuting attorney. And by the time I had gotten the prosecuting attorney, he, he stopped it. But um, they had taken, um, let me see, it was 4,500 of the books. Well, of the books. In the, that, that's a lot of Because there were eight books. of them. You don't go as fast as they could. Well, let, let me ask you something in the middle here. Uh, by that time, what are you feeling? <laughs> feeling. Uh, I was too busy trying to, I couldn't believe you could, yeah. that in America, where the Constitution says how safe you are in your home and in your pa property and your papers and so on, that this could happen. And I've never heard any, any other judge ever do such a thing. I know some cases a little similar, even though these people were um, a accused of a drug, uh, you know, drugs where they yeah. can go take everything, put the children in the street, and off you go. And the fact that the, a, a judge has a, a meeting, it cost a man's life 27 years long here, you know, so yeah. it still does happen. But oh, yeah. Well, look at Waco and the end of yeah. Idaho. And, uh, yeah, we covered yeah. Waco in, yeah. in our jury show. Well, anyway, so what uh, Whitbeck does next, he decides, um, now, uh, we um, had proof through the courts, of course, you have to prove everything, that we had um, paid 750000 uh, for uh, litigation for the owners. And uh, so the owners said, and, of course, they wanted to pay us back. They were awfully nice people. Um, so we said, well, we will put it in half, well, uh, 160000 And then I found a, uh, we had come back now. Uh, the children were through with high school, and mm -hmm. they were out at the university and at Cornish. And so it was time for me to come back. So I um, had a house that we had bought, and I would fixed it up. And it should have sold there. The prices of real estate weren't nearly mm -hmm. as expensive as they were out here. And it was worth about uh, 100000 But um, I sold it um, in a hurry mm -hmm. to the um, uh, hardware man in the town. He had always wanted that house. Mm -hmm. And um, so he paid 70 Well, he didn't pay, but he um, he offered uh, 70000 And he paid a, a $1,000 earnest money. And then he um, moved in, mm -hmm. and I um, uh, took another um, truck and um, loaded up our things and came west. Um, yeah, I, I, I want to uh, remind the friends here that uh, in, the, in, the, in the first show we talked about that at one time you found it necessary to pack up your children and go to Illinois, was it? Yes, mm -hmm. Cisna yeah. Park, Illinois, because yeah. uh, we wanted to keep them safe while uh, Jack was yeah. fighting this through. Okay, so. Uh, so anyway, um, the S, no, not the SEC, uh, the um, Internal Revenue mm -hmm. at that time uh, slapped a, um, a uh, what do you call it, when you 
Aline. Aline against the house because they said we owed $45,000. Not that we owed it, but mm -hmm. that Federal O Line had owed it, and therefore we, as mm -hmm. Jack, as the principal uh, officer, owed it. Now, Jack told him no, that the, the Federal O Line didn't owe it, and it took us some. Oh gosh, it was about eight years, I think, through the courts to prove that uh, Federal Low Line didn't owe anything at all. And uh, all of the time that we were going through the courts on that, this man lived in our house mm -hmm. in Cisna Park and uh, had only paid a thousand earnest money, he didn't pay any um, uh, rent at all. Anything. And at the end of that time, they gave him free and clear title to the property. Mm -hmm. So he got a. Um, you know, hundred thousand dollar house for a thousand dollars was pretty mm -hmm. good. Uh, so then um, uh, Whitbeck decides that he's going to get us out of this house. Now that that brought us up to the present. The house at um, this one right this here. This one here. Uh huh. There we have a picture. Uh, the it was on Lake Washington at Seward Park. We were right next mm -hmm. to the tennis court, and um, it's a little dark, but you might be able to see it. Anyway, um, we had. Um, when the house in Redondo, uh, the castle, had been um, taken uh, for the payment on the, this mortgage, um, the tennis court and the land above it hadn't been taken, and we still owned that. And so I sold that for 57000 And um, But the 10000 a down payment for that we had put in for the owners. Now, they said that they would get that house for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was 180000 um, I And we said, well, we'll just call that quits. Then you don't owe us anything else if you mm -hmm. get this uh, this for us. And But they couldn't. We needed um, the money that they, that they, they tried to, but um, we needed it for litigation. And so there really wasn't an awful lot for um, the house. So we... Um, Paid the ten thousand that they had paid down on this fifty-seven thousand for the tennis court and the land above it, and then they paid five hundred and some dollars a month for um, the payments, and uh, we turned that over on this house. So we were actually, in essence, paying for a place that the owners were supposed to pay, pay for. But anyway, Whitbeck told the courts that we hadn't paid a dime and that, we, that they had gotten it just uh, to uh, rent to us mm -hmm. and that we hadn't paid the rent. And they wanted us out of that house. Um, so we went to court and I brought two big boxes. We had another lawyer. Jack was, um, by now, was really... Um, not thinking, uh, he was in shock, yeah, I think, this, really. Yeah. He was there at the lawyer's table, but we had this young lawyer from New York, and um, he really hadn't been in court before, and he was scared to death. And I had all this evidence that we had paid, but he wouldn't admit but any of it. it. Yeah, you, you don't know who talked to him either. No, yeah, so that's right. While you continue to your story, so, I'm going to get a yeah. newspaper article that I remember, I think, where you packing up the boxes. Is that the oh, one? Oh, I hate to show that. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> then, I look then, awful. <laughs> <then be one. laughs> but yeah. <laughs> yeah. I told him, uh, they interviewed me, and, and uh, they said, uh, what do you think about it? And I said, well, mm -hmm. uh, justice has fled to brutish beast, and men have lost yeah. their reason. It was a, a take from uh, Shakespeare, but I was awful disgusted mm -hmm. that morning. Um, it was the day before uh, that uh, at 4.30, uh, he said, all right, you're going to be out. Uh, but he didn't say when. when oh, yeah. no, he said 8 o'clock the next morning. That's right. And so I went to... Um, uh, Weldon, I think it was, the uh, attorney on the other side, the bad guy's attorney. And I said, um, you have to hire uh, men from the Millionaires Club to come and uh, uh, evict us from the house. If you will let me have a couple of days, then I will get uh, men myself and I'll pay mm -hmm. for it and, and I can get a, a truck and maybe something will survive, you know, rather than yeah. just bro everything broken up. And um, he said, well, that, that sounds reasonable. Uh, so at 8 o'clock the, ne the next morning, here comes the uh, police and, and uh, Whitbeck and um, former friends. And um, 
they went all day in Jack's office, reading mm -hmm. through all the papers to see if they could get some skullduggery on him. And of course, we don't have any secrets. There wasn't anything for him to get. But anyway, mm -hmm. they were in there all day. And I asked the policeman, I said, well, now that's against the law to do that. Can't you get rid of him? And he said, well, I don't know. I can't. Mm -hmm. you know. So there we went. Well, I had these dishes that you'll yeah, see here on the right. table. Mm -hmm. They were import from uh, Rome. And um, they went with our dining room set that came from Mexico City. And they were awfully pretty and I didn't want them broken. So I uh, called one of the women from the church, friend of mine, and she came down and she very carefully boxed them up. And uh, Whitbeck went out and he saw them in the box, so he picked up the box and just let it drop down. Yeah. And uh, so on. Well, they put everything out on the um, uh, the lawn. Yeah, so that's that's why we have them on the set here because that's <laughs> yes, the only right. ones that's left over, so they're very special. Yeah. It was a, a set of um, a baker's dozen. There mm -hmm. was 13 of 13. everything. Uh, but anyway, um, we had to sleep, Jack and I, on the uh, lawn that night to protect uh, the uh, things from the uh, uh, the people that would come and just take yeah. them away because um, we didn't. It was night and we couldn't uh, get trucks and uh, men to help us haul them away at that time. Uh, I managed a big apartment house. There was about $6 in the bank when my husband finally died. And um, so I had to do creative things to survive. I'm 80 years old, and mm -hmm. I um, run an, a bed and breakfast out in um, uh, Redo uh, Rainier. In Rainier, yeah, yeah we, this we, is we, it. we got a picture of that, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and um, uh, but first, I was managing an apartment house up in Seattle, and I, when somebody went in not paying um, mm -hmm. their rent, it took us three months and a lot of money to get rid of them. But this was less than 24 hours. This judge had us out of there yeah. when we had paid most of the money on the place. But anyway, it's just one of the things that um, is justice in America right now. It is, yeah. Uh, I still, America is a wonderful place. It is. It's just that sometimes people do bad things. And uh, we've, we've still, we've got to work on, um, on our freedoms. Mm -hmm. And uh, Thomas Jefferson said, um, a couple of really wonderful things, and I don't, I haven't memorized one of them, but he said that, um, he said, I consider trial by jury as the only anchor ever yet imagined by man by which a government can be held uh, to the principles of its constitution. And I think that was an excellent statement by him. Um, so I'm not I'm not bitter at all. I think that um, that those that do wrong are always punished in the last analysis. Sooner or later, yeah. It, yes. Soon it, it would appear so, but when you on the, on sitting on this side of the fence waiting for something to happen, it takes it's a hard, long yeah. time. And Whitbeck tried to get Jack disbarred mm -hmm. too, and. Um, uh, Jack had an enemy at um, the Bar Association that was very happy to go along mm -hmm. with the idea. They have a referee, they call it, uh, not a judge in the, um, at the Bar Association, and uh, so we had a trial there. And um, McNichol, uh, the judge that had heard five mm -hmm. um, years of testimony on the officers of federal line and so on, and had said that the insurance commissioner had acted without justification, in mm -hmm. fact, a law. Um, came as a witness for Jack and uh, said, you should be giving him medals for the things that he has done for this uh, community and everything, and instead you're haranguing him. And uh, so uh, he was exonerated, mm -hmm. but um, nevertheless, the Bar Association gave him a $5,000 sanction just mm -hmm. to be ornery. So, um, you know, you don't, um, you don't always win all your battles. Mm -hmm. Or so it seems. Yeah, uh, but you still have to keep fighting for justice. That, that, that's it. And the fact that you decided to come and tell the story, we really appreciate that because when, when, when people hear something like that, you know, injustices have been done all through the years. And when yes. the founding fathers made these laws, um, they probably hadn't figured on the internet or anything like that. Um, <laughs> oh, no, this whole new ball game. It was a whole new ball game, but <laughs> by principle, um, we have still chosen to keep those laws. You yes. see what I mean? Yeah. And um, now with the internet and everything, you mentioned Waco here earlier. Yeah. If it hadn't been for the people on the internet that just wouldn't let it go, 
uh, Waco would not have been, the issue would not have been revived. Yeah. But even so, they convicted some of these people and gave them 40 years in prison. And they are and still there. And if it there. hadn't been for the jury, though, the jury set some of that aside for the no. few people that didn't get but burned. But they are still in jail. They got are up to they? 40 years. What the jury intended to do was to throw the government a bone <laughs> Excuse me, and give them a little pat on the hand. Say, you know, but that's why they went for the lesser charges. These people are still in jail. And they got 40 years. Now, after all the trauma, you would think all the trauma they went through, and uh, all that they were in for was because they had guns, which is our Second Amendment. Uh, you're you know, right. That we're, we have the right to guns. <laughs> so, boy, I talk mm -hmm. about travesty and justice. Yeah. So, so when when you look at it, um, when you look at that as a whole, you you're thinking, wow. Um, in fact, I came across something the other day on the Oklahoma bombing uh, on the building on the bombing of the building, and I looked at that two three times, and I'm just wondering. Um, but mistakes were made in that case, you know, and so we could just go on and on. And, I and we can so many facts um, that were put in the paper, and not one of them was accurate. Mm -hmm. uh, even if the the real facts would have made a much better story, they mm -hmm. don't seem to get them uh, in there. So, but the public blindly mm -hmm. will accept a lot of them. Will oh. what you is in the paper? You know, that's why I'm very grateful that we have public access television, because that mm -hmm. seems to be the only place that we can present these stories the way uh, we need to. And, yes. uh, and unfortunately, most people go to the um, regular news media, you know, but when someone pays your bills, you just have to yeah, um, you, you have to go. You follow like the money bit. line, mm -hmm. and you see where yeah. it goes. And, yeah. and it's really okay to forgive a person or a, a, a group of people or even the government, but do you really forget it? Uh, to forgive is to forget, isn't it? In it's supposed to be. Uh, except yeah. I have a little problem with that sometimes. Yes, uh, I know. Uh, very honestly, on my part. And of I course, can, obviously, I haven't forgotten her. I wouldn't been able you, to tell you the story. Remember the whole thing. Now you see, so. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. But I think that our God is much better than individuals. Needless to say, and mm -hmm. hopefully, when you ask forgiveness for things you've done wrong. He does forget as well as forgive. Mm -hmm. I hope. Uh, yeah, I hope. Yeah, I hope yeah. so too. Yeah. So, so in 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 the meantime, your husband, your husband did get tired and and. Well, he was still he was still fighting mm -hmm. up until the um, time because the Northwest Twenty, the same uh, rules that uh, it applied to our getting back mm -hmm. the Southwest Eight applied to us getting back the Northwest mm -hmm. Twenty, and he would have if he had uh, survived, but. Whitbeck took the people out there, and he didn't know how to get mm -hmm. those buildings going. So th they just ended up um, getting nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, it was it was a sad thing. Um, Jack um, worked for so many years with no uh, relief at all, um, working day and night and every weekend, and. Um, he would try to keep himself healthy by taking a three-mile uh, jog mm -hmm. each morning. Uh, we lived at Seward Park, which was a wonderful mm -hmm. place. There's a three-mile uh, track around the um, park. Uh, but he fell unconscious one day and finally came to and managed to stagger home because we were right next to the park. But um, we took him to the hospital and they said, well, it wasn't a uh, stroke. Actually, it was, but mm -hmm. he had four strokes and then finally his heart was so weak that um, he didn't survive it. I came in and I, you know, he was so much stronger and uh, was in such a healthy condition that I couldn't believe that uh, mm -hmm. he was actually going to go. And the doctor said, you know, his heart's going to stop any time mm -hmm. and should we do a code three? And I said, yes, let's give him every chance. And um, I was out talking to my three sons, and um, all of a sudden, I think it was God who told me, you know, he's going to die. You better get in there. And um, mm -hmm. so I went in, and he had just he had been unconscious, and he came to, and he said, I thought I was dead. And I said, oh, no. And he said, well, then I've got to get to the office. I've got so much to do. And I said, you know, Jack, our God loves you very much, and if you can... Um, be well, he's going to leave you here. But if you can't, he's going to
And do you know, he looked over my shoulder and saw somebody that I couldn't see, but mm -hmm. somebody was there for him, and he just went out of his body. He went so fast, he didn't even close his eyes. He just went, mm -hmm. and he never came back into his body again. And I didn't want to wish him back because he had... Um, worked for so long and so hard, and he could have been a very wealthy man if he had just dropped it and gone on to something else. But while he could, he wanted to fight injustice, and um, I certainly credit him for that. Mm -hmm. So um, I remember when when you came, the, when we talked at my home, so we would know where we, what we was going to do here. Um, you said uh, when you was a very young woman, you didn't really know if you wanted to even do anything of that nature. Oh yeah, he asked me to marry him on our first date and mm -hmm. I said, oh don't be silly. Uh, you know, I had just gotten out of high school mm -hmm. and um, he was a bit older than I was and um, I was established in law and um, uh, I wanted to be a nurse and mm -hmm. I wanted to go through nurses training and so on. And um, so, but God told me that mm -hmm. he had something very hard to do and that I, he needed me. Mm -hmm. And um, I said, but don't I get romantic love? And he said, later, but right now you ne are needed. And um, so I married him, not really being in love with him, mm -hmm. but he was a fascinating man. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, there was a group that wanted to run him for president of the United States at one mm -hmm. time. He was, um, he had a good mind and mm -hmm. he read all the time and he was up on everything. And he was, had a lot of wisdom about him. Mm -hmm. and, and so just because you agreed to do that, um, you, you do look how, how your life went and the lessons that yes, you learned. Yes, yes. We had a happy marriage. We went mm -hmm. all over the world. We, uh, uh, we had a real good time. Mm -hmm. so, so with his passing, was that the end of, of the case? No. I don't know if they've even gotten rid of all the money now. Uh, when he died, there was uh, five million in uh, federal O-Line's um, account that the uh, lawyers were still fighting over. Mm -hmm. um, there was such a travesty. There's a lot of things that I didn't go into because it's just too involved. It's just too involved. But mm -hmm. um, uh, the um, people that uh, went out and seized that land, of course, the land mm -hmm. was valuable, and um, that was the whole thing. You follow the money line, and you follow, mm -hmm. you know, where it goes. And um, uh, the insurance commissioner's lawyer got uh, the corner of 99 and um, 320th uh, for his booty. Oh, the, one of the insurance, well, Billy uh, Sullivan died while it was still in court, uh, but one of the uh, insurance commissioners that came afterwards, uh, they got the uh, headline in the paper, but it was just a tip of the iceberg. He had swiped the company island up in Canada as his booty, and um, we were out at uh, Castle Island, and uh, we had, um, were taking the boat into um, Ganges. We kept it in the boat works there, and um, we uh, went past uh, Monk Island, which was the company island, and we saw a boy with a, um, a uh, boat there that seemed to be in trouble. Mm -hmm. So we stopped to give him a lift, and um, so he comes aboard, and we uh, tie up the boat and brought it in with us. And um, so uh, he introduced himself as the insurance commissioner's son. Yeah. And then we found out the hard way <laughs> that they, you know, it was their island now that they had taken over the company mm -hmm. island, and so. Um, that had gotten in the paper. We didn't put it to the paper, but it uh, it had gotten in the paper. But um, all the other people that had gotten stuff um, out of um, of uh, Federal Alliance and Federal Shopping Ways troubles um, are just too numerous to mention. Yeah. Now, now, for argument's sake, let's say that everything you had set out to accomplish. I mean, in a way, you did. But before all this happened, uh, we would now have. No fault insurance. Yes, Jack was for the no fault mm -hmm. insurance. That was one of the main things that he wanted to do. And we would have an insurance company that that uh, that paid within forty eight hours. Uh, we didn't have any lawyers. You know, all the other companies have uh, sometimes whole floors of lawyers that look at all the private, or I mean, all the little print. You yeah. know, and any little deviation, any way that they can get out of paying, yeah. they'll do it. Uh, but it, um, he wanted to, he wanted a Camelot. He he wanted he had read all the books on shopping centers. We went to Europe and looked at all the new shopping centers. Went to New York and all around the country looking at the shopping centers and evaluating them. And um, the strip uh, up to then, um, uh, the strip development along highways had been. Um, 
about the only way that they did it where um, uh, the traffic was a problem mm -hmm. and this sort of thing. And um, uh, the shopping centers were developed so that people could um, have free parking. And uh, we were going to have, of course, underground because um, uh, the, uh, the weather out here in Seattle is sometimes mm -hmm. uh, a little misty, if you know what I mean. And uh, uh, so it would have been a it would have been a beautiful setup, but um, anyway, yeah, a lot of people would have benefited from it. Yeah, they no certainly doubt. would have. Yes, and so in a way, a lot of people did benefit from it, just in a in a different capacity here. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. Um, your advice to the to the new generation uh, stand up for your rights, things like that. Yes, they have inherited freedom by a lot of people dying in the past mm -hmm. and giving up everything to fight for freedom. And they, you know, it isn't easy. Freedom is not given. Mm -hmm. You've got to work for it. Always work for it. You've got to, to vote, number one, mm -hmm. to be conscious of who you're putting in. It isn't, it isn't um, enough just to vote uh, without d seeing who it is you're voting for, don't go by what the papers say about them, but mm -hmm. find out what they're like, what their background was, if they have been in uh, public uh, um, office before, uh, what their stand on certain things was. You know, how, the, how are you protecting the country, the world that we live in? We all have to live here. As the um, ads say in TV, mm -hmm. we're all on an island that we can't live. You can't get off you of it. You can't yeah. get off of it, that, so you've got commercial. to take care of it. Mm -hmm. But um, freedom is not free. It, it really takes work, and you've got to work at it all the time, or you're going to have it taken away from you. Mm -hmm. Now, um, here in, in Olympia, that's where we tape these shows um, in uh, in, in Washington State. Now, there, some of the young people, we have the Evergreen College here. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, at, Ever, uh, at Evergreen College, they have very alternative programs for people. And um, I, I really don't know how the story goes. It's just bits and pieces that I remember. They wanted to plant a garden. Um, some of the young people wanted to plant a garden in the middle of one of the streets. And of course, it got shut down. And so at that time, somebody asked me what I thought of that. Now, when we tell people you have the freedom to do this, I, I believe we need to check um, well, that was license, just not how freedom. free can, yeah, yeah. How free can we difference. get with somebody. Yep. Can, can I yeah. get your input on that? Well, license isn't freedom. You can't do something that's going to, uh, to destroy somebody else's freedom. You know, mm -hmm. you can't put a garden in the middle of a street. The streets are for cars. Mm -hmm. Now, in our area, we've got um, some, uh, the county wants to blacktop the roads around there, and um, we've got a couple neighbors that want them at five miles an hour because they want their kitties to be able to play in the streets. Mm -hmm. I taught my children, I've got five of them, and I raised two orphans, I taught them not to play in the streets. Mm -hmm. You know, there are times that you have to, Freedom means um, that you do the right things, but you don't ever step on somebody else's freedom. That's right. You know? mm -hmm. So it isn't license. Freedom isn't. Yeah, but uh, some of the young people there, unfortunately, they don't understand that. Well, and, they and, better and be taught. And of course, taught, that's, that's the, the trouble. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest problem that we yeah. have in America is the, that we're taxed too heavily mm -hmm. so that the mother and father, if, they're, if mm -hmm. the family is uh, happy enough to have a mother and father, usually it's, uh, there's over half of the families are one, uh, one parent. But nevertheless, they all have to work just to bring mm -hmm. food home. So the children are not being taught mm -hmm. morals or anything else. They're kept alive, but they're not being taught. And there's several ge generations of that mm -hmm. now. So naturally, is anybody surprised at what's happening? No, I don't think they so. They shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. We've got to get back to less taxes and have the one parent stay home and take care of the mm -hmm. children. If they don't want children, they shouldn't have them. If they have them, they ought to stay home and take care of them. Mm -hmm. Teach them how to live. Because our whole country will go down if the family life goes down. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. But then here again, you take some of the mothers that choose to stay home. And then they're being penalized in other areas just because they do that. So here again, we're dealing yeah. with a double-edged sword. Uh, 
So let's work on that. Let, work, work on that. <laughs> See, because every time we put a story out there, and, and I'm not even sure if I told it right about the about the garden. I, I heard some. Yeah. I, I read something about yeah. it. And and but but we are in a in a free country, but we can't be hurtful to other. Well, our freedoms. We're not in a free country anymore. No. A lot of our freedoms have been taken away. Mm -hmm. So we've got to get them back. And you know the the people. Uh, have the power if they want to take it and it's hard to do but you've got to watch all the time and you can't let people get away with uh, with uh, taking your freedoms away you really can't mm -hmm. you've got to work on it there were some awfully good quotes on that subject um, Yeah, I, but anyway, I guess we um, don't have time to go into them. Well, but we, um, we have we have a few minutes because uh, when when I when I was pulling up, you was you were sitting in in the car looking for something there. There um, was one thing that I wanted to to quote, and I can't find it right now. Uh, but anyway. Um, well, maybe, I hope that it will just make you. people think mm -hmm. for a little while and um, try to, to um, if you're called to the jury, for heaven's sakes, go. Yeah. go. Mm -hmm. If you have to get a babysitter or, or forget the bridge party or whatever, mm -hmm. go and try to vote your conscience. Yeah. And to remember that you've got the right to nullify a law that is a bad law mm -hmm. and remember justice. Mm -hmm. Our Statue of Liberty says that we're going to have justice and it's being fled to brutish beast as yeah. Shakespeare said, let's get justice back in America. Yes, yeah, since, since we since we had the, the uh, jury show, jury for your information, a lot of people came and talked to me about them being on jury duty themselves and uh, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden uh, they said, well had I, you know, had I been able to get the whole story um, you know, I would have changed exactly. my mind on something, and and just like in your case, you know, we got all these newspaper articles and everything, and and that's now this is the first time we heard your story, so we really appreciate that. <laughs> well, you know, I was a foreman of the jury, and uh, it was only six persons in the jury, and that is one of their uh, mm -hmm. coins. Now they they find that it's too hard to regulate uh, what twelve people will do, so they only have six. But anyway, um, the judge didn't allow. Uh, the uh, report from the um, arresting officer. He was in uh, jail and he couldn't, uh, not jail, he was in uh, the hospital. He was mm -hmm. very sick and so he wrote out the whole report. They wouldn't allow that. They wouldn't allow the fact that this woman that was accused of um, beating up her husband had uh, done it four times before and was in jail for it. That wouldn't be allowed mm -hmm. because it might prejudice us. So every one of the jury felt that she was guilty but we had to uh, to say she was innocent because mm -hmm. we he hadn't proved that she was guilty. Yeah. So the prosecuting attorney came and said, well, how come you voted that way? And I had to tell him he hadn't proved it. Yeah. He said they wouldn't allow me to put anything mm -hmm. in that would prove to you that, uh, that uh, you know, so truth is the last thing that ever gets in court. That, yeah. So there has to be some changes made. And when the founding fathers um, set up our country, there was the executive branch, there was a judicial <laughs> branch, and there was the uh, legislative branch. And there is checks and balances against the executive. Mm -hmm. You can uh, you can get the uh, the president out if he you know if he doesn't uh, do what you like. You can uh, dismiss him. You can um, you can dismiss your senators and representatives if they don't mm -hmm. do what you want. But the judges. Um, very seldom are even voted for. They're usually they appointed. appointed. That's and they're right. in there for life. And we mm -hmm. have judges on the bench that have Alzheimer's and they've got mm -hmm. life and death over people. There has to be some changes made there. There really has to be. You can't have them uh, regulating themselves because naturally the old boys all play golf together golf and together. so on. They aren't going to go uh, getting each other into trouble. There has to be changes there. There really does. Yeah. So we're going to put out it and keep educating people. And um, uh, all in all, I really appreciate you coming to visit with us now. I'm I appreciate sure, I, being asked. I'm sure that at a later time we might be 
we could dig up some other stuff that we might want to talk about at a later time if you were willing to come and visit with us I'd again. I'd be delighted. And, and so now at this, uh, do you, in the autumn of your life, and you're still working? Yes, mm -hmm. I'll be working for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And that's fine, mm -hmm. you know. And so, uh, and we listed your phone number if anyone absolutely needs to get a hold of you. And uh, be fine. Um, it, it was just, it was just really great that you shared that with us. And I appreciate your, your going to the efforts that you've gone to at your own expense, I understand, to mm -hmm. uh, try to, to take these stories to the public. Mm -hmm. I think that's very important, and you're a wonderful person to do that. I thank you. Yeah, we all volunteers. I have a wonderful staff. Might as well acknowledge them. Uh, Justin yes. B. Wright, um, our director, Bernie Salazar. Um, he's our audio technician, and uh, Cliff and Vivian are our camera Cameraman. persons. Uh -huh. And then, of course, we all chip in and start from scratch and build these wonderful sets. And we do. But you know who's the most important in all this? What? The friends that watch us all around the country. Yes, yes. Because yeah, if it wasn't for that, you know, we wouldn't have a need to do this. And uh, so I understand that you have relatives all over the country. We're going to try to. Um, well, I've got a daughter there. in Anchorage. She's mm -hmm. on the state uh, legislature there, state mm -hmm. representative. And uh, Anchorage Channel 44. Uh huh. And I've got a daughter in uh, Colorado. Mm -hmm. And she's a woman pilot and an en engineer. And I've got a uh, son in Los Angeles. He's a lawyer mm -hmm. and um, a realtor. He has over 200 pieces of property to get. Mm -hmm. um, so I've got the, and then my younger two boys are here uh, locally in uh, Seattle and uh, down here. In yeah, the, so we just, we just all over the, now I have to ask you this. She flies a Cessna, right? Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but she's trying to get uh, checked out in the Learjet so mm -hmm. she could be a pilot for that. She works for a company that, um, uh, charters Lear mm -hmm. jets, and so she's all excited about all that. All excited, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. That, it takes a lot, of, a lot of guts to do something like that. Yes, yeah. it does. But we all have our own calling. and uh, Yes, that's right. God gives each person a special talent that nobody else has. That's right, and then we all, a little piece of the, of the broader picture, isn't that wonderful? Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's just up to us to, you know, to be able to, to, to pick them up, and again, um, um, do we have time for another story? No. Do we have time for another story? We do we have time for another story? We have. No, no we don't. <laughs> well, then I, we have to leave you, and you just have to come and join us again. And you promise to come back, and we we talk about some some good old days in the good new days because we are yes. we do want to change things to the yes, good we do. new times that's right and i thank you so for coming and everybody working together you know god doesn't um, tell you you've got to do everything there's over half the people go to bed hungry every night mm -hmm. well he doesn't say go feed half the world mm -hmm. you know he puts a burning desire in each person to do one thing and if each person does one thing it all gets done mm -hmm. so you don't have to get too excited about all the injustice you just have to do one little thing Okay, and we're going to do one little thing. We're going to leave you until next week. We have a wonderful week. And um, summer is almost over, and um, we'll see you next week. <laughs>